I'm an architect, urban designer. I worked on this presentation with Dover Cole and Partners and Urban Design Office in Miami. And I've spent a lot of time looking at streets in New York and around the world. Uh, I, I wrote uh, with Bob Stern, New York 1900. I wrote with Victor Dover at Dover Cole Street Design. And um, with those books and my practice, I've spent a lot of time looking at how we use our streets in the past and how we use them now. And um, on the screen is the view of the intersection of Fifth Avenue and Broadway at 23rd Street in Manhattan, looking south towards the Flatiron Building. The photo was taken in the early 20th century when Ford Motor Company had started mass production of the Model T, but cars weren't yet dominating, dominating the street. In fact, when we zoom in even further, you can see that traffic engineers had not yet invented all the detritus they used to claim the roadway for cars, like stoplights and painted traffic lanes. And in the photo, uh, cable cars run down the middle of the street and people wait in the street for the cable cars. There are no crosswalks, there are no traffic lanes, there are no stoplights or stop signs. People on foot, wagon drivers, automobile drivers, cable car drivers, they all negotiate their progress in the street by looking at the others around them on the street. But in the next 100 years, traffic engineers, departments of transportation, and something called organized motordom claim more and more of the streets for the car. Organized motordom was a consortium of car manufacturers, oil companies, and the like that realized that they couldn't sell many cars unless they got people off the streets so the cars could go faster. They called pedestrians MHOs, moving hazardous objects. So they drastically widened the streets, narrowed the sidewalks, and kicked the MHOs to the side of the street. And it's even worse than you think when you look at those two photos and you see that, uh, so that's at Lexington Avenue at East 89th. Um, you see there used to be a light well in front of those houses. So not only was the sidewalk much wider, but the sidewalk was several feet away from the houses. And they went so far when they widened the street that they even knocked off the stoops and even the ornament above the doors. And these photos were taken when the, uh, when the east side IRT subway was being built underneath Lexington Avenue. And uh, the, uh, the Metro North train is only a block away under Park Avenue. So, you know, along with these things in New York City, we had the best subway line in America and the best train lines in America. Uh, and we, we still made the car the king. Uh, here's another photo taken in 2014, showing the historic heart of Greenwich Village. 300 years ago, the village well was right there in that space. And now it's what we call an auto sewer. The giant graphics easily visible at well over 60 or 70 miles per hour clearly tell anyone on foot that this space is not for them. Get out of the way, it says. What all this does is make the driver comfortable going faster. And that's what kills people, including 40,000 Americans last year. We can talk about this in the breakout room if you like. But something else started happening in the early 21st century. Here's the same intersection we saw before. You can see the flat iron building in the background. Um, Looking, looking down um, Broadway with Fifth Avenue on the right, we're looking south. And in the early days of the Bloomberg uh, administration, uh, when Jeanette Sadi Khan was the DOT commissioner, uh, she did a plan that people had been talking about for years, but that nobody thought was ever going to happen. And she made it happen literally overnight. Uh, she told almost nobody other than the mayor and her employees. She had the trucks show up in the, at night and overnight, uh, they took the widest intersection in New York City. Uh, as again, it's where Broadway and Fifth Avenue cross a double wide street, 23rd Street. She took the widest intersection in New York City, which was also because of that, one of the most dangerous. And she simply took a lot of it away. She, she put brown paint on the road. She put boulders in the road. She put car seat, she put uh, seats and tables in the road. And when people showed up in the morning, more than half 
the road was gone. And since more than half, since three quarters of uh, the residents of Manhattan don't own a car, uh, and the majority of New Yorker of New York households don't own a car. New Yorkers love this, and um, uh, but it's been it's been a slow progress since then, which we'll talk about a little bit. And my last picture before we get to Brooklyn um, is a little bit about what's going on in Europe, especially since COVID. Um, but also for the before COVID. Here's a current photo from uh, Google Street View in central London. The percentage of people in central London who own cars is about identical to the percentage of Manhattan. But look how different differently they treat their center. Uh, this is not a special slow zone. The street looks much the way it has for decades. But reminiscent of the old New York streets, you can see there's no stop sign or stoplight. The, discrete yellow paint is only to tell you there's no parking at the corner. And um, what looks like it might be paint in the middle of the road is actually the Google graphics telling you the name of the street. And the real thing, um, there's no crosswalk. Um, there's no yield sign. And yet here in New York, we have twice as many people killed in traffic every year even though we do all these things supposedly to make the street safer. And this section of London, Mayfair, is one of the safest places in London when it comes to traffic deaths. Why? Because speed kills. And the more comfortable a driver feels going fast, the greater the likelihood that she or he or she will kill someone. Uh, Gib, I have to ask you a question. Are you a co-host or do I have to admit everybody? Uh, I think you have to admit them. Um, so in that context, we come to the discussion of Pacifica Dean Streets, starting with Pacific Street, specifically on the block next to the PC Richard and Modell. Uh, here's a Google Street View looking east on Pacific with Modell's on the left and the library that Brooklyn Speaks wants to save on the right. And here are some of the principles developed in public meetings and forums held by Brooklyn Speaks. Let me emphasize that none of these are set in stone and my personal opinions tonight are only opinions uh, up for discussion. Uh, we, are, we are going to be looking pretty closely at the, the first principle, buildings developed at site five should be set back from Pacific Street with a building or building section contextual to the row houses on the south side of the street, buffering towers from the residential context. Uh, another principle, which, would, which is pretty self-evident we're not going to look at tonight, is the ground floor space uh, being activated uh, with, uh, for street life. Uh, we will talk about uh, the third principle in consultation with the community, NYC DOT, should redesign Dean Street between 6th Avenue and Vanderbilt Avenue and specific, uh, Pacific Street between Flatbush Avenue and 4th Avenue to make each a slow, narrow street intended for local use. Uh, Brooklyn Speaks wants the library to be designated a landmark and uh, preserved. And in consultation with the community, following the opening of, of the school building on, at, uh, on site B-15, the city must prepare a plan for ensuring student and pedestrian safety at the intersection of Dean Street and 6th Avenue, including a reduction of municipal uses at this location. And we will, we will look at that. So here's the same view that we just looked at, but with some visualizations of how this might work out. Uh, we're looking across 4th Avenue towards Pacific Street and the Barclays Centers. A suggestion of what a podium on Pacific Street might look like is on the left and the podium height, the materials, fenestration uh, complements the existing buildings across the street. Uh, and these, these are all noted in the drawing. Um, another idea is that you can see that when, when you enter this block, uh, there's what's called a continuous sidewalk. 
And uh, New York City does have some continuous sidewalks, which is where there's a curb cut, but instead of the street interrupting the sidewalk, the driver goes over the sidewalk, obviously indicating um, that you know you're not on Fourth Avenue anymore, and you, you've you're on a different type of street uh, where you have to slow down. Um, and these are some of the ideas that can be used for making uh, slow streets. What's a slow street? New York City defines it as a street where cars go under 20 miles per hour, which is the almost magical speed where cars and pedestrians have fewer collisions. <clears throat> pedestrians are less likely to be hit and much less likely to die if they are hit. Uh, I can talk about that if you'd like. Here's an aerial view. The rendering of the tower on the left. The rendering of the tower on the left is not intended to be a representation of what the tower will look like. Um, and <clears throat> Brooklyn Speaks ask is that the tower respects Brownstone Brooklyn where it sits on Pacific Street. And that on the other side of the tower, as I said, it meets the street in a positive way that activates the streetscape. And otherwise, that's just a, an abstract representation of a tower. By the way, uh, because, and you'll notice that we also cut off the top of the tower in order to not discuss at this point the height of the tower until something's been proposed. By the way, uh, because of where the tower sits on Flatbush, you will see it all the way from the Manhattan Bridge and all the way up uh, Flatbush from the Manhattan Bridge, making it a very important landmark in the city. Here's a cleaner version. And this section of Dean Street, as you all know, is on the other side of Flatbush to the east next to the Barclays Center. Um, there's some important things to look at in these few blocks. Here's the satellite view from above. We're going to look first at the block in the center. Um, here's looking across 6th Avenue down, uh, east on Dean Street. The new school will be in the base of the building. on the left, it's not ideal house on the same block as a school for young children. The good news is that based on informal discussions, the fire department of New York seems to be open to the idea of moving the firehouse. I should say informal discussions and seems to be open. So looking down from above, the school is on the top, the firehouse is on the bottom, uh, next to the playground. And a playground, is great for a school, uh, not great for a street with speeding emergency vehicles. Here's what it looks like on the ground. So one good solution might be to make this a school street, which is a type of street New York City does have, which is open only, pedest op only to pedestrians during school hours. Uh, including a little before opening and a little after closing. Uh, another factor is uh, that Dean Street is on a bus route. Uh, if, this, if this section of Dean becomes a school street, that's not good. But several organizations are working on improving Atlantic Avenue, putting rapid bus lanes and safe bike lanes over on Atlantic. A related suggestion that's come up is to build a police parking lot where the firehouse is now. That would get uh, both fire uh, parking and police parking off the street. And uh, the, the lot could have an entrance on 6th Avenue right next to the precinct house. And since the firehouse is a city owned site, um, affordable housing above the parking might be possible. Which brings us to the next point. This surface parking lot next to the playground belongs to the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation and Development. HPD has a 
requests for proposals out to develop affordable senior housing on that site. That's a good use for a quiet street, but this section of the block shouldn't be closed like, uh, like the school street. <clears throat> so it might be divided into two parts with the school street on the left and a two-way street usually entered from Carlton Avenue that would make it a slow, quiet, easily accessible street. Uh, I might add that the, uh, the, the a difference between street design and traffic engineering is the street design is, is always contextual and it doesn't, the street can easily vary as it moves along through the city. Here's a view of the street and the senior housing site. And the last thing before we close, um, most of you recognize this view of Dean Street with the Barclays Center on the left. Uh, local residents complain about the traffic and idling cars uh, during events. And one thing to consider might be that some stadiums and arenas around the country annex, uh, sorry, letting people in, annex adjoining streets during events. Uh, this slide shows uh, Yorkie Way in Boston next to Fenway Park. Most of the time Yorkie Way is a public street, but during Red Sox games, it becomes an open street for everyone who has a ticket to the game. Vendors sell hot dogs and socks hats and, and it works well. So thank you.